True. Beverly Oliver. Is that really her? I know a lot of people. I knew you were going to ask me that. Someone <laughs> commented on our video that we made. Who did? Someone on the YouTube. Yes. I don't know what did they, they say? They said that wasn't her. You know, I don't know. Let me. Okay, I'm going to answer that this way. I don't know. Beverly Oliver came forward in the late 70s, early. They say there's a report from uh, 71 where she talked to the FBI. I don't know. I'm going to say this. If I stood here and say that I know for a fact that Miss Oliver was not the babushka lady, I'd be lying. If I stood here and said for a fact I know that she was the babushka lady, as I told you first time we met me, I'd be lying. I don't know. I'm going to tell this. I think I told you last time I was here. Forget everybody else. And I'm just going by one man. Mary Mormon and Gene Hill were already over there. The Babushka lady was already there. When Mr. Brim came down, they all were over there. The three ladies were already there when Charles Brim and his little boy walked down to the scene. Well, as they walked down to the scene and came down to the scene, let me get a picture here, let me get a picture. That's this picture right here. Bill and Gail Newman on the ground, Cheryl McKinnon on the ground, Mary Mormon, Gene Hill on the ground, Officer Hargis, the officer running to the grassy knoll, Babushka lady, and then there's Charles Brim and his little eight-year-old boy right there on the ground. Well, I asked Mr. Brim, I said, Mr. Brim, approximately how long was it that you walked up there before the shots? He said, uh, Mike, he said about three to four minutes. I said, did you see the two women and the lady in the red coat and the black coat? He said, yes, sir. I said, did you see the lady in the beige coat? He said, well, Mike, he said, I tell you what, he said, I walked right in front of her. He said, and I looked at her, he said, she was just about a foot away. And he said, how you doing, ma'am? And she said, fine, sir. I said, so you spoke to this woman? He said, I did. I said, did you look at her in the face? I said, now I know a lot happened that day and you went through a lot. I said, but do you, he said, oh, I, he said it was before. He said, that's why I remember. He said, I looked her right in the face. I said, well, Mr. Brim, let me ask you a question. I said, in your opinion, I said, just your opinion. I said, and you can give me whatever levitation that you want as, as, as time. I said, how old would you say the lady in that picture was? He said, Mike, he said, there's no doubt in my mind. He said, that woman was at least, he said, 40, 45. He said, at least. He said, he said oh, ain't no doubt. He said, I looked her dead in the face. I said, so you would say then that the woman known as the babushka lady was not a 17-year-old girl? He said, hell no. He said, that wasn't no 17-year-old girl. He said, man, that woman was at least 40 to 45 years old. He said, and then he said, he said I'll even say, he said, she could have been 50. He said, the damn sure wasn't no 17-year-old girl. Well, in, in 63, Beverly Oliver, she, she was born 1946. So that would make her 17. Now, let's go to the other el element of that. Bush, Babushka lady was there, regardless of who it was. But Beverly Oliver in 63, at the age of 17, she knew Jack Ruby and worked for him. She knew Abe Weinstein, worked for him. She knew all the players. She knew them when she was 13, 14 years old because of Shari Angel. Shari Angel took her to the place. And Beverly Oliver was a waitress. She did some singing. I'll leave the rest alone from what I've heard because I don't know and I am not wasn't there. But uh, so if you look at it at that element, that gave her a little prop. So was Beverly Oliver the babushka lady? I do not know. My opinion, the woman looks to be older. Still doesn't mean it wasn't her. I don't know. So what's the significance of the publicity? Well, she took a film. Oh, her film would have been the greatest. You think Mr. Zabruta's film was bad, but shit. If they'd have got that film, oh man, she filmed the gunman shooting. So they don't know where? She said they came and took the film away from her two days later. I spoke to a FBI agent uh, last year who's still living, he's in his late 80s, and he was in the Dallas field, the regional field of the FBI. And he told me that yes, 
He said that was a film confiscated from a lady at a nightclub two days later. And he said, I had the opportunity when they developed it to see it. He said, and man, you can see the guy shooting from the fence. So I, this FBI agent, I said, so you saw this film? He said, oh, yes, sir. He said, I don't know where it's at today. And uh, he said, but there was somebody, he said, with Miss Oliver or whoever it was. He said, well, he's, what do they call her, the babushka lady? I said, yeah. He said, well, whoever it was, that film was film. What a film if we'd have seen that. So that, that's, that's the story that I know about the babushka lady. Uh, Why did they call her the babushka? She had on an Italian scarf that was a very famous uh, style back in the late 50s and early 60s of women. And it was an Italian made scarf and coat and they called it the babushka set for women. Mr. Zapruder, who made women's clothes, made something similar to it. You know, Mr. he was a dress manufacturer. Abraham's a pruder. You know, so, uh, yeah. I remember women wearing them. I, when I was a little boy, I remember seeing them. And I would hear people call it the babushka scarf. I didn't know what they were talking about. But I do remember. Was the Warren Commission's report trying to state that there was no babushka lady film? Did they, even they, didn't even, they, didn't even, they didn't even talk about that because that didn't come forward, like I said. Yeah. See, it didn't come forward really until 80, 1980. And she wrote a book, Mr. Clemens, she wrote a book and um, came forward and said she was the babushka lady. Uh, Mark Oates, who comes here all the time, he has a film from a lady named Patsy Pascal. Miss Pascal was in the fourth floor window there of the old red courthouse. She was in the fourth floor window that's where she was, and she had her camera. Well, she filmed over the top of the pergola there and filmed the grassy knoll. And Mark Oakes has the film, and you can see some flashes of a gun, what appeared to be a gun. And uh, he sells it here all the time. He sells it here. Uh, he'll be here tomorrow, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a great film. Mark Oakes has that. He was the first one to interview her, uh, the only one, as far as I know. And, uh, uh, she gave him permission to show it, and he sells it. I don't know whether they split the profits today or not. I don't know anything about that. It's none of my business, but uh, he does show it. She was right there, and Miss Patsy Pascal, she's 78 years old, still living. And she, she'll tell you that those shots come from here. She told the FBI, she said, I don't give a damn what you say. She said, those shots come. No, it's on the tape, the one we have today. That She, she told uh, 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 the guy that was here to... Uh, Buck Ravel and, and Gimling. She said, you're lying. She said, you're gonna lie. She said, you're covering this up. She said, I filmed it. She said, you'll never tell me. She said, I know those shots, that last shot came from behind that fence. She said, I have it on film. That's what she says to this day and she damn sure did film it. So there you go. That's documented and made the, uh, you, you can pull it up. Uh, it made the front page of the Dallas Morning News made the front page as the years went by and she came out with it. And uh, she, uh, oh man, uh, she's, a, she's a very uh, jubilant lady. I've, I've met her a couple of times. Mark Oates knows her real well. Uh, he knows her real well. And uh, she, uh, I believe her story and myself is my opinion. I do believe that she, uh, film that film and uh, uh, film the shots from the grass, you know. There it is right here. Yeah, Patsy Pascal film, there it is. This is from the day of the assassination. Patsy Pascal film. And there it is right there, it tells you. She was in the fourth floor window. She worked for Judge Joe Brown. She worked for the Dallas County Judge over there in that old red building, and she filmed it as the shots were going off. She filmed the flashes from the fence here, the grassy you knoll. She sure did. So uh, with all the witness statements, the physical evidence, the medical evidence, let me say this. That's something you all may really, really know. Uh, I think the number was 42, but people go up here and believe this bullshit. 42 physicians said that the last shot 
came from the front. I don't think 42 physicians are going to be wrong. I think they know more than these witnesses and these researchers and then idiotic, stupid-ass people like President Trump said. I, I agree with President Trump a whole heartedly. And uh, so it was a mass conspiracy. Next question.